The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Mick Shots, streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Savannah Hugh Moeller, Everson Walls, and Mickey Spagnola. And here we are on a Monday morning here at the Star in Frisco inside the SWBC podcast studio. And we are down to a final two in the National Football League. Welcome to another edition of Mix Shots. Did any of you get the prediction right last Monday? Kansas City versus San Francisco in the Super Bowl? No. We got uh, half, we got of, half it. of it. We got half Which of half it. Which half did you get half right? Half of it. Kansas City. Yeah. Kansas- all of you picked Kansas City. Wait a second, no. All of us. No, I picked the Ravens. You picked the Ravens? Oh, I, picked I the thought Ravens. you picked oh, Kansas you? City. We, I picked the Ravens. We so thought I was, you were smarter. Uh, I mean, That's all. We wait, thought you wait. Were Everybody picked Detroit? No. Yes. Yes. I did. Yes, I did. We did. Yeah. You so, did too. No. Yes, you did. I picked San Francisco yeah, at the beginning yeah. of the season. He picked it in his head, not here on the show. <laughs> I'm picked, glad you he heard that. You know, I always pick Dallas week. to go to the Super Bowl. Right. So, I, had so the, do I. I always pick the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys versus the Dallas Texans in the Super Bowl. Right. And, and I'm, I, as I was driving in this morning, I thought, I'm so stupid. I keep picking the Cowboys. The <laughs> so you're stupid too, Bill. So here we are. We got the Chiefs and the 49ers. It ought to make for a very entertaining Super Bowl. And we had a very entertaining championship Sunday on Sunday. Would you all agree? Mm-hmm. Quite uh, entertaining, yes. It's, Absolutely. Like, it's like we called it in the Chiefs game. I, I think all of us could see, well, some of most of us, <laughs> that uh, <laughs> I, just, I just couldn't see Baltimore's offense keeping up. That's what I thought. I just couldn't see it because uh, they're, they're a high, high-powered offense, but they're ground and pound. And I just knew that. Uh, and they decided not to ground and pound. Mm-hmm. Well, you just couldn't keep up with. with uh, they didn't Mahomes. have the ball. You couldn't keep up with it. And that's. I pretty well, much the, thought that's how they were going to. This the, game was going to be played. And, and I thought that was going to be the game plan of the Chiefs. Kansas City scored 17 points. Yeah, but they got ahead, right? right. Mm-hmm. Baltimore ahead. had to play from they behind. Right. And the so called NFL MVP. When he's behind he do and well. he's got to throw the ball, he'll make a mistake on you. And he a lot of mistakes the but He the threw a touchdown play. pass that was fumbled at the goal line. I was going to say, that was the, <laughs> the key play right there. If they score that, you're talking a whole different thing. Not a very bright player, is he? <laughs> well, Zay Flowers. I mean, not just him, but I the mean, H- Hardeman call? did it. Yeah. Hardeman did it against KC. It was the same thing. But he did two stupid things within five minutes. Yeah, that's true. I think uh, they were even saying on the broadcast the emotions kind of got the better of the Mm -hmm. Ravens, just Mm -hmm. the way that they were playing and some of those calls. Like, they couldn't control some of their emotions on the field, and that affected the game. Even when the order came from the sideline to jump off sides, they couldn't control their emotions. (laughs) And Roquan Smith Mm -hmm. gets a personal foul penalty, which gave them an an additional 10 yards. And it was pretty obvious. Yeah. You could jump off sides to stop the clock or right. whatever. All you got to do is go tap do. the guy. To right. jump you, don't off sides. you don't have to <laughs> lay him <laughs> out. Just clock him. But I, he, didn't, I didn't know that that was worth a personal file. I thought you could just hit him. I thought you nah, could. Not, not like that. Not intentional. Credit to the officials for <laughs> figuring it out, right? What was going it, yeah. on here? I have a feeling, depending on what team did and what player did what, I, th- you know, I don't know if that's automatic. Oh, I, I have. I don't know if that's all. The well, way. I immediately said that's got to be a personal. Really? Foul. Oh, he okay. just laid him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the re and the reason that they were jumping off sides is they wanted to make it first and ten and not first and five at that right. juncture in the game. It's so they would have could have ended the game earlier. As it turned out, they ended the game anyway with mm-hmm. a third and nine pass downfield to MVS, which I didn't think was a surprising play call at all. No. Me either. No, you had to go and Tony the game on the away. broadcast yeah. was unbelievable. They threw it downfield, and I heard another uh, former coach this morning talking about unbelievable. No, that's how you end the game, yeah. right there. Especially if he'll catch the ball. 
And the only the only risk involved in it is it's an income. Well, it, it, with Mahomes at quarterback, he's going to take care of the football. Yes, yeah. presumably. And so the only risk really is an incomplete pass where you're not taking some time off the clock. Where Baltimore, but with the defense like the Chiefs have, you punt the ball down there and you mm. think the Ravens are going to drive the length of the field for a touchdown. But what they assumed was they were going to get single coverage and they were going to have everybody at the line of scrimmage yeah. mm -hmm. to stop the play. Yeah. So the easiest thing to do is throw it deep. Yeah, but I mean, the Ravens had used their timeouts, and that meant you're you're just north of the two-minute uh, warning. That means you get a first down, this ball game is over. So you know, go you can, for it. You can look at stats all you want, but it's when you make plays, that's and that's true. what Mahomes did. He yeah. didn't wow you with completing 20 of 25 passes for 300 yards. He had 20 out of 25 in the first half. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they, he, he wasn't, and he wasn't the, trying to go downfield, though. That, and that's he was yeah. merely Just trying to smart. manage the, the game. The only way the they were going to lose the game is if they committed a turnover in the second yeah. half. You know, <laughs> It <laughs> just came up <laughs> yeah, the yeah. NFL Network. And how show. about those uh, catches by Travis Kelsey? Just, yeah. some, just some incredible catches from him. I it think uh, I saw something. He passed uh, one of Jerry Rice. Jerry, Jerry Rice. Rice. Yeah. Yep. Wow. That's saying For right. most, most postseason catches yep. in a career. Mm -hmm. well, well, you know, what you saw was, to me, connection. You saw teamwork. You saw a quarterback and a tight end that were – they just dialed it. They just dialed it. Like the one that Mahomes ran forward and threw at the last minute. And yes. he makes a diving yes. catch on a not a real good pass. Not a good pass, but it was the but pass it was, was in there. It where? gave him a chance right. to make the play. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't gonna be you're not gonna get a great pass. And Kelsey was prepared for wherever it came. You could, and you the could. touchdown itself. That was just uh both of them just being in sync. Uh back shoulder, the, the D B was in perfect position. Perfect position. And it, all he had to do was react. He was in position, but he didn't react in time. And just the way that Kelsey, Kelsey knew where it was coming. And that was just a beautiful catch, beautiful connection. You know, those are the times when you need your quarterback and your wide receiver or your receiver to be. This is the time when you need to dial it up and be on the same page. And they did. They and, did it perfectly. And it was also another indication if you get pressure on the quarterback, and I don't care who he is, mm -hmm. Uh, it's going to cause problems. Yeah. And that was one of the things sacks. down the stretch mm -hmm. the Cowboys could not do. Well, you, you had a deep – one thing about this, this uh, playoffs, you saw good defenses. Mm -hmm. you, no matter which side, you still gave your quarterback a chance. You know, your quarterback didn't have to keep scoring just to stay in the game. Right. You had defenses that kept things – and, I mean, even Baltimore's defense, as you said, mm -hmm. KC didn't score that hey, many points. Hey, 17 points, yeah. right? Come on. You, I mean, that, that defense played their asses off. They just made a few mm -hmm. mistakes, but they gave their offense a chance at all times. And that's what we need around here. We need a, a defense that the offense can de rely on. I don't want an offense that the defense can rely on. That's just not the way the game is really supposed to be played. What happened to that complimentary football? Yeah. The defense didn't do much complimenting in significant games, mm -hmm. right? Here's the other thing that I thought stood out to me was, um, and if we can just uh, switch over to Detroit, running backs do matter. They do. Mm -hmm. They do. Oh, yeah. Yes, and they do. Both sides in that game. On both sides. And, Thank you. And <laughs> is it okay to take one in the first round? Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. And it's what, Jameer Gibbs. What I saw <laughs> from him was – he made people miss mm -hmm. in the hole. In the hole. And the Cowboys running backs were always such in a hurry to get to the line of scrimmage. It was like straight line running mm -hmm. instead of making people miss. And, boy, Gibbs can make people miss as long as he doesn't go the wrong way on a handoff. Well, I, mm -hmm. I got to say this. Uh, McCaffrey. Yes. Mm -hmm. When he did not want to be brought down. <laughs> and I saw something. I didn't. I always thought he was good. I thought his footwork was more amazing than anything. Yeah. Mm. But that kid is strong. Yes, he is. I mean, How, he he's was a powerhouse. Strong. He had some big guys falling off of him on a couple of those last drives in the second half. That was key. And so he and Purdy working together. I just thought I, I have a brand new respect for Chris McCaffrey. That's the other thing you saw in both games yesterday: is tough physical football. Oh man. That was good stuff. Mm -hmm. Not a lot, not a lot of high scoring. That was that was kind of like throwback football. Those are the games that we saw back in the day. You know when, especially in the AFC, 
Well, the best team mm-hmm. didn't come out looking so pretty. They just came out. <laughs> that was all they had to do. Yeah, and we then, thought we thought Dan Campbell was stubborn when the extra point <laughs> against oh the Cowboys. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I kept saying to myself in my living room last night, "Kick the field goal! Kick the field goal!" And they're nope, they're going for it on fourth oh, down. Man. And I was the that, field goal that is right there. Could have been a tie game last night. Oh for them. man. It, and it could, and, and, and in turn, yeah. and it played out the same way. Now, who says it would? Mm-hmm. In turn, that means when you get down on the goal line at the end, all you need is a field goal to win it. Yeah, he probably would have gone for the touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Come no, on, no, guys! But, we're not we're winning. Kill a we're not, with a sledgehammer. We're not winning a game with a field goal. <laughs> We're winning it. We're getting into that end zone, my God. But that's what he did all oh, season the long. the Lions. Yeah. Well, poor Lions. Part, part of the reason why they were where they were, too. Well, yeah, but sometimes you have to look at things and say, you know what? That stubbornness has gotten me in trouble. Maybe I need to sit my ass down and just kind of just chill. Just go kick the field. Mentally but, just chill, you know. Well, what, what was the biggest <laughs> mistake he made coaching-wise? It was down on the goal line at the end of the game, <laughs> on third down, running the football. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, yeah. When yeah. you've got three timeouts, mm-hmm. because you cannot leave that mm-hmm. game in the hands of an onside kick. Mm-hmm. There's a, how, what are the chances of recovering an onside kick? They said the percentage. The next, it was it, next very to close to <laughs> right? very close the guy to zero percent. The ball. <laughs> but no, but but right. But when you're down there, third and goal at the one yard line, you have to throw the. Now you can run it on fourth down. Okay, yeah. because the clock it's is going to stop this. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But uh, you cannot run the football because if you don't now, you can all say that, oh, if you made it, that's a great call. No, it's still a bad call <laughs> <laughs> to run the football in that situation because if you don't make it, you, you just ended the game. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter whether you score the touchdown or not. But just think of the things that went wrong for them. Josh Reynolds with the two drops, one on fourth down, Man. one on that, third down. It's, wow. it's again, it's about <clears throat> it being mentally strong, you know. And then the the <laughs> the fifty one yard pass off the DB's face mask. Man, what is yeah. going on? When just I saw catch that, the damn ball, bro. when I saw that, I said, "Uh oh, this is the bad ball, sign. Bro. This is a bad sign. Just catch the ball. Just uh, knock it down. I don't know. One of the two. And then the catch from Brandon Ayuk. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. that was just yeah. incredible. Mm-hmm. And then after the game, they're asking him what was going through his mind. Well, not a damn thing. He just <laughs> saw the ball up in the air. And I, well, I better go get it, right? God. Like he planned it out that way. They, they, so so let, let's, let's – do we need to take a look – at Purdy, do we need to look at him in a different way after these two well, playoff games? I was looking at yes. him at halftime as he's a, he's a seventh-round draft pick, <laughs> the last pick of the draft. And then at the end of the game, I'm like, okay, wow, he's a first-round he, pick. Yeah, yeah. I love the way he ran the, well, that was oh, yeah, the, the ball. In the Those two runs that half. he made yeah. were mm-hmm. huge. But it opened up, and he just took – I've mm-hmm. never yeah. seen him run And he like showed that. a toughness. Mm-hmm. He did. Mm-hmm. He did. He took opportunities mm-hmm. to run the ball, and it worked out for them. And, when, and so when do they uh, vote for the MVP? That's already At the end of the regular season. So, so they, even before the playoffs start. Yeah. Somebody because needs I'm to saying, vote for an MVP after the after the whole thing is done. <laughs> All right. Let's I'm start saying, it here. I'm saying look, look, yeah. who's, look who's on top now. Yeah. I mean, we talk about Dak. We talk about Lamar. And no one wanted to con- in- include Purdy, even though we knew he had good stats. But they kept on th- talking about uh, Mr. Irrelevant. Mm-hmm. So, okay, let's take a vote right now. Who's the MVP? In the if, if we're taking it all the way, all to, the way to leading to into the Super Bowl right now. Yeah, who's the MVP in the league? That's an easy call. Who? Purdy. I'd vote for Mahomes. Mahomes. I like it. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of want to go Purdy. I, I kind of want to go Purdy. I just didn't like um, that took the a way it led up to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to take everything, okay? See, that right there. That's why I say Purdy because, you know, you have to take the, the, the season also into consideration yeah. and the playoffs. But look what yeah. Mahomes did with nothing We just gave you an receiver. example of and why they him. base it on yeah. the regular season yeah. because otherwise whoever does the best, whoever wins the Super Bowl is going to be the MVP. Yeah. <laughs> so does that mean that these other coaches, they're on the hot seat now? 
The ones that <laughs> at halftime, I'm going. Campbell's on the hot seat. I, I, I'm sitting there at halftime, going, "Oh, Shanahan on the hot seat. He can't get this team to the Super Bowl and win one." Now, but now okay. you got Campbell's on the hot Campbell's seat on because the hot he can't seat make and it. Harbaugh. How about that Harbaugh? When's a, yeah, what about when's, Harbaugh? When's that Harbaugh guy ever done anything? <laughs> Do they need money back from from Lamar Jackson's uh, contract? <laughs> Do they regret it? Because he looked clueless over there. He did look clueless. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, the, the, the sacks he had, he, he he didn't get rid of the ball. He, 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 he got to know where to go. He confused out there. Like he was looking for somebody to be open, and then mm-hmm. he just was like, oh, I'm just going to. I'm going to hold on to That's it. That's why I didn't pick Baltimore. I just I didn't trust him. No. Well, right? I, I didn't trust the entire uh Offense, especially if you stop him from they, running, right? Right, and that's what I mean. It's a limited uh, game plan. That's what I mean. I can't remember exactly when it was, but I think it was in the fourth quarter, and there was a time where he got flushed out of the pocket, and he wound up. It may have gone as a sack. He was out on the uh, near side of the field, and I think he was caught short of getting back to the line of scrimmage, mm-hmm. which probably counted as a sack. Mm-hmm. But I was like, okay, there's nothing open downfield. You are in the open field. You're the best running back in the league. This is when he league. scrambled right. R- scrambled on right. The sidelines. Yeah, I'm like, and he just take took off. Took a sack. Yeah, and he was taking instead. Dude, what was he waiting I mean, on? When you get out in that neighborhood, mm-hmm. go ahead and make a move. He actually stopped on the sidelines right. to make. Right. I don't know. Let's like let him catch up. I don't know what that was about. And I can't remember what the down and distance was, but it was third down. Yeah, uh, and it wasn't much. And I was like, run it. Run the ball now. This there's your here's he your kept, opportunity. Kept, You're in the you know, open he kept field. Making moves and faking and but that's and, where that's where uh, Mickey's uh, cousin uh, did a great right. great job of confusing uh, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. He offense. looked confused on that play. Well, mm-hmm. and here's the other problem with their offense. They ran for 81 yards. The leading rusher, Lamar Jackson, with 54. Right. So your other guys ran for basically 27 yards, and, and you had a quarterback. Good. With an efficiency rating of seventy-five point five, mm-hmm. you got a problem. You like that Kansas City cornerback McDuffie? He's pretty darn good. I like uh, number thirty-eight, Sneed. Sneed. I've always Jerry thought he Sneed. was good. Who knocked the ball out? I always thought he was making yeah. plays yeah. all yeah. season long for them. He's helped them defensively keep everything intact while Mahomes trying to get it. Together. So you think Zay Flowers learned some lessons like after you make a big catch don't get up and spin the ball in the guy's face. <laughs> I think he has a, I think he has a ground, lot of learning to do uh, in the league. And then stand over the guy and then two He's plays rookie, later man. dive He's for the end rookie. zone. Exactly. Like I, it, that's He's what I rookie. kept like thinking. I was like he just he doesn't know how to control these emotions right now. Well, they, and, didn't, uh, they didn't control any of it during the season because no. he was so amazing and he played off of that emotion. Yeah, and I think everyone was saying, gosh, look at how good this kid is, That's and right. he can make these catches, That's and then right. when it wasn't working out for him, mm-hmm. you saw another side. Mm-hmm. You think, uh, like Pete Carroll, Steve Spagnuolo um, has a eye for cornerbacks, defensive backs? I do. I do. He's got it in his background, mm-hmm. just like Carroll does. Seattle seems to come up with cornerbacks. Flowers also learned that when you take your gloves off and you go to the bench and get pissed off, don't slam your bare hands against your helmet. Mm-hmm. They were talking about, oh, yeah. he cut his hand. I go, no, he didn't cut his hand. He had gloves on. That didn't happen Stupid. in the game. Goodness gracious. And and so when you're dealing with a, an organization that this year, you know, always came out on top, mm-hmm. then how do you play when you're from behind? Yeah. And we saw what happened. I was afraid that Detroit was ahead because I've seen that before yeah. with them. Yeah. Get a big lead mm-hmm. and then they disappear. In the game, I said it at halftime. I'm going. Oh, I don't know. I no, don't I, I, I never like. I never felt comfortable if I'm as a because I picked uh, Detroit. I never felt comfortable that my pick uh, was gonna be what was gonna hold up in San Fran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And my they weren't. Mine was based best, more on what San Francisco is capable of yeah. than what uh, and Detroit. at home. San Francisco yeah. at home. So once you and it, it's just like we always see it. Once you make that one play, which I use play, mm-hmm. I knew it was over. Mm-hmm. I knew it was over. Like, oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, let me pose this question when we come back. Uh, your responses. What is the this it doesn't have to be the most important thing, but the n- name a thing that the Cowboys can learn 
from the four teams pl- that played yesterday. What do you think of that? I think yeah. I like Great. it. Love it. Okay. All mm-hmm. right. Let's see if we all have the same answer. Or we have four different answers when we come <laughs> back here on Mix Shots. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola. A journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Did you know that responding to one spam call can lead to more? Or that the IRS would never ask for your social security number on the phone? Beat scammers at their own game by subscribing to AARP Fraud Watch Network alerts and texts. At aarp.org slash beatscammerstx, you can sign up to receive information that helps you recognize and avoid the latest scams. That's aarp.org slash beatscammerstx. To mix shots. K Post Roofing and Waterproofing, the official roofer of the Dallas Cowboys. All right, let's go around the horn. What do the Cowboys uh, learn from Sunday? The four participants in the championship games on Sunday. And the ans- my answer to the question isn't even an answer to the question. I posed the question <laughs> wrong for my answer. So I'll let you all go first and then I will You'll correct chime yourself. in. No, I'll chime in with uh, just my observation. It was more like an observation from the games on Sunday and how they apply to the Cowboys. Everson, you want to go first? Yeah, I, I think with me, and it's something that Spags just brought up, and I, I've said it all uh, year long, I, I don't really care much about numbers and things of that nature in this era of football. You know, you can have numbers all you want, but you just got to make the plays when it's time to make the plays. And I I do a lot of uh, 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 ego stroking when uh, I get on the treadmill or, or whatever. I always watch the old games that, mm-hmm. that we played. And I do try to mentally compare them to what we did back then versus – what we do, what we did now. Back then, 1980s, 1990s, it not, we, we romanticized it so much, you know, about how we, we played and how we won. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we won so ugly. I'm talking about 80s and 90s. I mean, just ugly games. Mm-hmm. And we lost to some t- people we never should have lost to. But when it was time to step up and play in December after Thanksgiving and in the playoffs, most times we did that, and I'm talking about whether it was me with uh, the Cowboys or with the Giants. Those teams knew how to elevate themselves when it was time. I remember some 13-10 games that were exciting damn games, and the Cowboys pulled it out because of some heroics in the 90s, especially by Emmitt Smith or someone like that. I think we get so caught up in numbers and how pretty the score looks when it's got all these high numbers up there. I think we need to go back to where we were and let the defense control the games for us. It's okay to score a lot of points, but in games where the real boys come to town, in the games where the tough teams come to town, you got to be able to play, when I say down to the level, I mean play as low down, dirty as you have to to win a ball game. So to me, once again, it's all about when you make the plays, not how many plays you make. 
So you want to like screw with the kicker before the game, and, <laughs> and move his tee, throw it in the, the end zone. Kicker. What was so going on with that, I need, dude? I need some perspective on <laughs> Justin Tucker and why he was at that end of the field and the Chiefs were at that end of the field. I don't, can, I don't think he can it's, kick it that far. I don't. Well, he was just stretching or something, wasn't he? He was just the video I saw. Yeah. He was he was down stretching and he had his helmet off, whatever. And it and Kelsey came over <laughs> and grabbed his helmet and his footballs and threw him or whatever <laughs> t whatever it was and threw it Kelsey to the side. Was funny, so man. petty. So I no, think he does so that good, on though. purpose, yeah. man. He but, but but that's one of those things where okay, if we you need to. He's got brothers. We need a broader perspective on yeah. who is at wrong here. Who was there first? And who's supposed to be at that end of the field? You know? The kicker warms up. It, that's what happened last year in the playoff game in San Francisco. That was the kicker. at midfield? Do what now? Was that closer to midfield, though? Well, he was probably trying to attempt from about 40 yards. And because this one looked like it was down near the goal this line. This was at the goal line. Right. Yeah. Right. But last so year. So he was f way on the, the either the Chiefs end of the field or the Chiefs were right. on the Ravens yeah, end of the field. But they trade. around. Right. Like, what was he doing? I mean, right. they trade sides. And, mm. and it, you know, it's just the kicker. He's not getting in anybody's <laughs> way. Kelsey's just being a jerk, man. That's all that is, man. Boy, you can tell he starts firing people up. He and, needed. They needed Big Dom out there to take care of that oh, stuff. No. But when I first heard about it, I didn't, without seeing the video, I thought that there was they get he got in his face or whatever. But the way Kelsey did it, he just grabbed it and threw it over to the side, or whatever. I thought it was a, that was the way to do it. So, no, here's what you do because this is what San Francisco did. They just stood right in front of Mar and, and they couldn't kick the ball. They right. were just standing in his way. But now, that was confrontational. Yes. Yeah. This one was just. And you, you could know. imagine what some of the kickers would have done back in the day. They would have kicked the freaking ball. Whether Just go ahead and kick not. it. Yeah. 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 Way, you want to stand there? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I can see the Chicago Bears kicker, Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Butthead, they call him. I can see Butthead. He'd kick the ball. <laughs> hey, that's what they called him. I didn't call him. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they call Kansas City's kicker now, Butker. Oh, okay. That's Harrison Butker's his oh, name. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we just yeah, we just called him that. But. Yeah. All right, all right, Savannah, you're up. Yes, all right. <sighs> Thinking back on this season and then watching some of the games yesterday, I really did love seeing how San Francisco was able to come back mm -hmm. when they were playing from behind, and their ability to make big plays that were meaningful and actually get them somewhere, I think was one of the biggest takeaways. Mm -hmm. And when you think about games that we played uh, just this season that we lost to big opponents, when we lost to San Francisco and we just could not fight. And then when we lost uh, to Miami, yes, it came down kind of to the end mm -hmm. there, but still things like that. And then against Buffalo, I really recognized, uh, like we already mentioned, the running back situation. Mm. You saw Christian McCaffrey. You saw the ability for him to make huge runs, huge plays. You see Brock Purdy running the ball. I think that there was just a lot of inconsistencies in some of our really big games when it came to rushing. Yeah. And the ability. The big games, yeah. like you said, the big games. The I, ones where it was against a tough opponent. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you look at all these other teams that have a really stacked group of running backs and you see how the how well they're doing. Look at Pacheco and look mm -hmm. at how mm -hmm. uh, Edwards Hilaire and Gibbs. Mahomes, they all yeah. know how to run the ball. And I think the Cowboys need to do a better job at that. And I think going first round with the running back is actually a great idea. I, I would say have running backs no problem and linebackers. With that. Running backs linebackers and don't, linebackers. Don't steal mine. Oh, go ahead. Yep. <laughs> don't go out there and try to finesse the linebacker position, mm -hmm. especially when teams go heavy and they're playing a fullback the way San Francisco plays a fullback or go two tight ends uh, as much as some of those teams did and be out there with six defensive backs. That are masquerading as linebackers. Mm -hmm. You got to have linebackers out there making plays and don't get caught short handed just because your third round draft choice got injured in training camp and you kind of threw your hands up and go, well, oh well. Mm -hmm. What happens if you get an injury? And don't get short handed at cornerback. 
uh, especially in the playoff game mm -hmm. uh, when you've got to play a guy with a harness on his shoulder uh, that you don't want to be in single coverage and start playing zone defense that they had no idea what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of and, and, uh, to, to your point with Marquise Bell, everyone we, we've been applauding him all yes. season for the, he played one of the best seasons, himself. Yeah. best seasons of any himself. player, mm -hmm. but there's something to be said for having played linebacker your whole life, mm -hmm. you know, and being able to uh, read and react, you know, to dissect. Use play. your instincts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and Marquise Bell will have that. Okay, but, but you I there were so many have occasions. That as a linebacker, I want him to have that as a defensive back. Right. Yeah. And, and because there are occasions that he will be lined up in the box. Mm -hmm. And just like you saw with the teams yesterday, they, but they always have at least two linebackers on the field. Mm -hmm. I think with me, it's um, you got you have to know that this is where the game is going now. This is what has beaten you. We weren't able to make those big plays in the big games that she was talking about because we were whipped. You know, we were we weren't tough enough up front. That's just the way it is. And I'm not talking about just offensively, defensively. We weren't tough enough up front, and. We were wishing our way through each game. You know, we were talking about it in here, like, man, we got just 60 Bs, 70 Bs that running all over us. And thank God we even stayed in the, uh, the Dolphins game. Mm -hmm. That was one of the better games. I wouldn't have put that in the big games because we actually played well in the end. Yeah. But those other games, uh, the Buffalo game, you know, we have to get those out of our system. They cannot happen with a good team. You got to go in there and show you got something down there. You can't just go in and say, oh, well, guys, uh, you know, and you, you, you look soft as a team and therefore your reputation. Ron Springs used to say all the time because we did business together. He said, your rep is all you got. And that's on the real. Your rep is all you got. You know, so if you come in there and they think that you're a certain way, then that's how they're going to play you. And so they will always look at you that way. One of the tough decisions they're going to have to make is can Mozzie Smith – play better, make that second-year jump, mm -hmm. or did we make a mistake with a first-round mm -hmm. pick? Because if you're relying on him to get in there and provide some bulk mm -hmm. in the middle, you better be right. Mm -hmm. Because if not, you saw what happened when Hankins wasn't in there, by the way, and he's getting older, and he's an unrestricted free agent, by the way. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, that's one of the decisions they're going to have to make along with what the running back position that we pointed out with both guys unrestricted. How do you restock that running back position? Resigning what you have, free agent, draft. Those are kind of some of the big decisions they're going to have to make. And, mm -hmm. Bill, I'll let you have the floor on – Mine is more of a positive one. Okay. You negative Nancys. <laughs> um, look, at, look at those tight ends. Can't wait for this. Look at those tight ends that played yesterday. Yes. The Niners with George Kittle. The Chiefs with Travis Kelsey. Mark Andrews was back for the Ravens, but even when Andrews was out since November, Isaiah likely. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the young, the rookie with Laporta. the Lions, Sam Laporta. Laporta. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Cowboys have to feel really good about what they have at the tight end position with Jake Ferguson. Because I think Jake Ferguson fits in fits in with the – he's a younger – No, he's Agreed. ready. He's ready. Yeah, he's there. No, he's, he is, he's right there with he's Laporta. And he's one year uh, – more experienced than Laporta, and he is. If, assuming he stays injury free, uh, he's going to have a career that uh, rivals what those other guys are doing. Well, if you need to know what the NFL thinks of Jake Ferguson, yeah. who's going can't play in the Pro Bowl? Two of them: Kittle, Ed Kelsey. So. Ferguson's going to replace him. No, Kittle, oh. okay, you're talking for the NFC. Yes. That's nice. I hear he's going to replace him. He deserves so he was it. That's that, great. He, he was deserves that it. close. He, was, he deserves it. So you're right. He's going to do what in Orlando? He's going to do what? <laughs> <laughs> he's going to replace Kittle on the NFC There's Pro Bowl a, team. So what do they do at 
in Orlando. They're going to play flag football. They're playing flag <laughs> football. It doesn't matter <laughs> playing. Okay. It's the Bill. award. I'm, su- I'm with Bill. I'm there. surprised they're, they're adding. Did they add players to the Pro Bowl team as often back in your day, Everson? Do you recall yes, that? Yes, they did. No, not a lot. I mean, no, but like there I were a lot of it. For but injury my, reasons or, yeah, but or they, for they, the Super Nobody Bowl. held out. Nobody like, hey, I'm not going. It was, it was Hawaii. Everyone wanted to go to Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even back then, plus well, it was around. You got some money for it too, when I didn't first, you? No, chump change. Uh, oh, like, it wasn't was, chump change uh, if you make twenty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, but you had to pay for your family hey, to come with you. Twenty thousand dollars a year. <laughs> who said I was making twenty thousand? Oh, I thought that was your bonus. <laughs> My bonus was more than twenty thousand a year. Come on, man. So when? <laughs> remind me when the Pro Bowl was played back then. It was after the season was over. It was after the yeah. Super Bowl, right? Yes. It was a week after the Super Bowl. Right. And the teams that won the Super Bowl, I remember uh, the Niner guys coming in after the game. They came. We were at practice already. They would come in later. Yeah, because it was like that in the 90s, too, right? Well, after Cause I remember when the 90s. Mike, the 90s is when it, got, when it started to where it's going now. And only because... During the 80s when I was there, that's when you can tell people like, hey, man, I'm not going to go out here and bust my head open in in this game. Mm-hmm. And I haven't been practicing since for, for mid-December. Yeah. You know, and now you want Chuck yeah. Muncie to come out there, who's usually 235 when he plays, but he walks around at 260. Now you want me to come out here and try to make a third and three, you know? So we it started to get to that point. Right. Where nobody really wanted to go out there, and especially they've been drinking beer at been the beach. Drink, for come on, man, they've been chilling. <laughs> yeah, they're taking the their vacation. Team, right, yeah. right. The playoff yeah. teams, we were still, you know, in, in shape because we had just finished playing. But if you talk about guys that didn't make the playoffs, yeah, and then they're coming here, you talk about their season was over at Christmas. Man, it's, it's a on. rough game. Yeah. So they were still playing it after the Super Bowl, for sure in '93, because uh-huh. I remember Troy was supposed to fly to Hawaii after the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he ended up bowing out, and he went to Dr. Andrews in Birmingham to do some checkups on Well, no, no, there were back. players, of course, that, but it was... That were in the Super Bowl. Y- yes, but... But now, but, you replace those guys right. with... And I don't know guys why. Guys wanted to go. You don't need to replace them for a for flag, flag football. <laughs> but if you're uh, the guy. A defensive lineman, right? But, but it, what it's for it, their resume <laughs> is what it is. But it's for their exactly. Hall of Fame resume. Yeah, exactly. What it does is it lets you know that what other people thought who mm-hmm. was next in line that was to the be good a pro bowl. That was good to know. But we never, really, we never had to go that deep. We just didn't. It, it, people wanted to come and play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. But think how many more Pro Bowls you would have made had there been the same number of Man. people that were not going as today. I'd have been waiting, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up, honey. Don't unpack yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We continue with more mixed shots in just a moment. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Cowboys football and Miller Lite. What a pairing. Can cracks a kickoff. Tailgates going way past postgame. Sunday night overtimes followed by Monday morning swagger. Brisket in the smoker. Miller Lite in the cool. America's team playing America's greatest sport. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys football tastes like Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. 2023 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Did you know that responding to one spam call can lead to more? Or that the IRS would never ask for your social security number on the phone? Beat scammers at their own game by subscribing to AARP Fraud Watch Network alerts and texts. At aarp.org slash beatscammerstx, you can sign up to receive information that helps you recognize and avoid the latest scams. That's aarp.org slash beatscammerstx. 
You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Back, back to mixed shots. The 99th annual East West Shrine Bowl will feature 130 of the nation's top NFL draft prospects on Thursday, February 1st at the Star in Frisco. Tickets as low as $20 are available at ShrineBowl.com. Proceeds benefit Shriners Children's. All right. Very good. And in fact, practice going on this morning here at Ford Center at the Mm. Star in Frisco. The East squad was there this morning working out and the West squad uh, later. And uh, that game on Thursday night and uh, a face on the field, not a face in the crowd, but a face on the field was one Dan Quinn here back home Mm. today. Oh, yeah. Will it remain his home is the question this week. Were, well, they, out, were they outside or were they inside? Indoors. Indoors? Indoors. Okay. We should go as a team. You want me to get a suite for the game? <laughs> Let's do it. Can you afford it, Mickey? <laughs> I don't think there's any suites up there. <laughs> can, uh, can we take one of the coaches' booths like we watch practice? There. Bring some binoculars. So Dan was yes. supposed to, by the way, since you brought it up, uh, he's supposed to fly. That's to, why I brought it up, Mickey. <laughs> Seattle tonight. He doesn't know way. you yet, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to sneak that in there. Mm-hmm. So, so, so Dan, what happened? So Dan explain. Quinn was in Seattle the end of last week. Yes. That link is on Thursday. He interviewed there at his second interview, his in-person interview there, and he is headed to Washington D.C. and reportedly to interview for the Commanders' head coaching job tomorrow. And they've. Uh, Other reported candidates that they have include Ben Johnson, the Lions offensive coordinator, Mike McDonald, the Ravens defensive coordinator. Uh, So they got nothing. Aaron Glenn, the Lions defensive coordinator. And, oh, those seasons are over. And so the commanders are going to have a head coach here pretty soon. And Bobby Slowick, offensive coordinator in Houston. So who are we Which is Bob Slowick's son, Who are we interviewing? Well, you got nothing Or nobody yet. Well, I mean, he's going around taking interviews, you said. Quinn. Well, but what if he doesn't That's get a fair hired? Question. Well, what if he does? Well, they better have a list going. That's what I'm saying. Right who, now. Who, who, who are you, who, do you have you heard anything? Who are we looking at? Well, and, there's there are Mickey, I've got an idea. Mickey knows I have something. a thought on, I, I have a no, no. thought on one. Uh, it's been reported out there that the Cowboys might be interested in the former head coach of the Commanders, Ron Rivera. Hmm. I have a thought mm. that uh, there's a former head coach of the Minnesota Vikings that I would be interested in. Hmm. That would be Mike, Mike Zimmer. Zimmer. What do you think of that? I like Mike Zimmer. I, I like no Ryan. problems with it whatsoever. Either one, actually. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't need um, a first time, just like I didn't want a first time head coach if they moved on from McCarthy. I don't want to. I don't need a first-time defensive coordinator at this mm-hmm. point, especially with the offensive. I mean, with the head coach on his final year of his contract. The one thing I've noticed with some of these talks going on, like the thing in Seattle, they want to talk to Ben Johnson, the Detroit offensive. They coordinator, want to pick his brain, and they want to talk to Mike McDonald, mm-hmm. and that's why they haven't made a decision yet because they couldn't talk to them. Now that they've lost, they can talk to him this week. Uh, so, see, here, here's the other deal with this. You just mentioned all the different people Washington wants to talk to. So you, you fire your head coach not knowing what you're going to do. Well, what if you end up with worse? <laughs> If, if well, I, you could bring the head coach back in for an interview. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, by nothing, the way, I think that, I made a mistake. Right? That says, <laughs> George, Steinbrenner, George Steinbrenner did that with Billy Martin he all the sure time, did. right? He sure yeah. did. I mean, <laughs> you should have a list of what you want, and you don't go out there just fishing, right? right? 
You know what it reminds me that you said that? Uh, Charlie Waters tells the story that uh, for the final cut his rookie year, uh, Coach Myers uh, came – he was, the, he was the, uh, the guy that came in and told everybody you're cut, right? Uh, and they, Jim Myers did? Jim Myers. Really? He, he, he was, was too happy to do it. He was the <laughs> – what, what did they – I forgot. Was what was the name? What was the it. name they gave that guy? I forgot. Not the hatchet man. The, yeah, I think it was – No, it was, oh, I, I can't remember. Thank God I didn't have to – know what his name was <laughs> <laughs> anyway he he calls he calls charlie in and says you know we're sorry you, you didn't make the team mm -hmm. right and and charlie's like oh, what am i doing with my life now i didn't make it da 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 and it goes on for a couple hours and he gets a phone call <laughs> and coach meyer says uh Charlie, scratch that. We made a mistake. Oh, come on, it bro. wasn't you that was come getting on, it. It was someone else. It was somebody Some other else. waters? Yeah. And, and Charlie, so sad. And I think Charlie, like, started cussing, like, what are you doing? <laughs> Son, don't talk to me like that. <laughs> so, in the past... The Turk has been the name. The Turk, that's what uh, I was that trying what to think of. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know Hatchet it man. would apply to a, a, would, one that, of the coaches, that, too. That would be appropriate, too. Yeah, um, the Turk. You yeah. know, Sorry, we didn't mean to tell you you were cut. Speaking of uh, coaching moves, you know who the happiest person in the room is, don't hmm. you? Hmm. Savannah. I was going to bring this up, you guys. Well, first, I was going to bring up, did we all see that Kellen Moore is going to the Eagles? Yes. I was going to get to that. I was going to get to that. I thought, more importantly for you, we ought to talk about... Uh, Jim. <laughs> Jim coming Jim. in to coach the Chargers actually was so happy with that move. Family's really happy with it. And then I honestly think now that he is there, you have to look at Justin Herbert a little bit more seriously. Mm -hmm. He's going to really coach that guy up. So. Yeah. I'm excited to see I wonder they who go. they bring in as their offensive coordinator. He's got to be good because he's got a good quarterback. Because he's well, talking about bringing his defensive coordinator with him. Yeah, I think he's bringing in the defensive coordinator is Greg, what I heard. But uh, offensive, yeah, it's questionable. And there was two other guys' names came up for his defensive coordinator. Greg Roman's still out there, by the mm -hmm. way. And then somebody named Tanner Engstrad, the Lions pass game coordinator. Okay. They were thinking of uh, maybe he would uh, be uh, brought in. But I think he was bringing in his defensive coordinator from, from Michigan. So in that AFC West now, you've got Andy Reid, you've got Sean Payton, and you've got Jim Harbaugh, along with Antonio Pierce with the Raiders. So That's fun. That's fun. So are, are you confident now that the Chargers are going to supplant the Chiefs as the team to beat in the AFC West? Yes. Because Jim Harbaugh is there. Yes. Mm. You guys will wait and see next season. We'll, we'll come we full circle back this to this conversation. Day. That's right. I'm writing it down right we now. Mark this day. <laughs> the Chargers, they're on the come up, okay, guys? All right. Okay. Okay. So Kellen Moore to the Eagles. What do we make of this? I think it's a little wild. Mm -hmm. Pretty wild. Uh, that means they're going to throw the ball That's even right. more. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> good Justin for the Cowboys. Justin Herbert is going to be happy with that. Uh, Jalen Hurts. I'm Did sorry. Did you say Justin Herbert? I'm Jay, so sorry. Jalen I'm Hurts. So sorry. He goes from Justin Herbert to well, Jalen Hurts. I, I'll say this. Um, He's going to run the ball more than what he did here. Because Jalen Hurts will run the uh, healthy Jalen Hurts will run the ball I don't more, want don't to you think? Run my quarterback as uh, often. I think Jalen. I think uh, uh, he will make Jalen throw more. So th you think, think that may be one of the reasons? You think that may be one of the reasons that they decided on Kellen Moore is that he's more pass happy? You saw what happened with um, uh, with Hurts at the end of the season, mm -hmm. uh, mid season. He's, he's hurt all the time. And that's just not the way you want to use your quarterback. You don't want your quarterback to be a running back. And they have enough uh, good running plays and a couple of good running backs back there that are sufficient enough to where if you throw the ball enough, then Jalen Hurts can control the ball game. But it's got to be an entirely different system because everyone seemed to figure him out this year. It Maybe just, I should point out that in 2019 when he took over as the Cowboys offensive coordinator, mm -hmm that Ezekiel Elliott ran the ball 301 times. Mm -hmm. So this notion that all they did was the Cowboys threw the ball uh, is, is pretty false. 
uh, because when they ran it, uh, Zeke was running the ball uh, more than 200 times uh, a season. Hmm. And if you look at 2021, Zeke ran the ball 237 times and Pollard ran it 130 yeah, times. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. And last year, when Pollard led the team with 1,007 rushing yards, Zeke still ran the ball for 231 yards for 876. So there's this notion out there that all they did was throw the ball, and that's just not accurate about Kellen Moore. Mm -hmm. I just think he got a bad rap here. So I wonder if Doug Nussmeyer is going to Philly, too, to be the quarterback's coach. They but need a Nussmeyer, quarterback's coach, too? Yes, Alex Tanney was the quarterback's oh, coach. Oh, that's right. And uh, they, um, he is free to move on. So they're, And Nussmeyer was with more with the Chargers. Now, was Sirianni what, – wasn't he an offensive guy? Yes, he's yeah. an offensive guy. Yeah. yeah. So maybe he. So that's a more the more critical thing I think for um, Jalen Hurts is who's the quarterback coach. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. And so you it's don't just going to be. You don't think it'll be um, Kellen? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Like he because he Nussmeier was a quarterbacks both. coach here. Yeah, he could do both here. He could I do mean, both. He, he yeah. could both do there. both. But yeah. you want someone who, yeah, I need especially with a quarterback like Hertz and like a quarterback with Dak. You wanted someone who his uh, total uh, attention is on, on yeah, and on mechanics and mm -hmm. so forth. So, and I think somewhat this year, McCarthy. It was it's part had of that a heavy too. Hand in yes. Coaching the quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you noticed when they did their quarterback deal before practice, that he wasn't out there with the rest of the team. He was in there with the quarterbacks. Uh, so yeah, he had a heavy hand in doing the quarterbacks here. And I do think quarterback coaches do make a difference. Yeah. Uh, especially with young guys that don't know everything yet, right? Um, so uh, yeah, but that's a that's an interesting choice, isn't it? So somebody thought a lot of Kellen Moore. Mm -hmm. That's kind of close to home. Close yeah. to home? Yeah. yeah. I mean, as far as him being It's going to be right juicy there. now. <laughs> you're going to see him it, twice. It, it, exactly. It's one thing It's one thing when he's with the Chargers and you're just facing right. him one he's time. Right, he's over there yeah. somewhere. Yeah, right. yeah but he's or it's right here next door neighbor. All of a sudden and he's now there. when you're it's your chief <laughs> rival in the division <laughs> and you're going head-to-head -head with him twice, mm -hmm. it's a different story now. Interesting. Intriguing. Yep. Well, I saw somebody report that um, uh, some two teams uh, requested permission to talk to Aiden Dirty yes. uh, as the defensive coordinator. Who? The Cowboys' defensive line coach. Wow. Hmm. I shouldn't. Have, I don't even know his name. He's the guy that got started as part of the. Uh, the international international nice. program they had mm -hmm. for coaches. It's uh, Green Bay, the Rams, and Atlanta have sought permission to speak to Cowboys defensive line coach Adam Dirty per multiple sources, according to Todd Archer two days ago. Okay. I thought Would I you like to know more about somewhere. Dirty's football journey? Yes. As well, Tom I know Archer he tweeted came out, over it's here. It's unique. Having grown up in London, he played mm -hmm. in NFL Europe yes. before joining practice squads in Carolina and Kansas City. He helped train players like F.A. Obata. Remember him when yes, he passed through here? Through NFL UK, he was the D.C. for the London Warriors. There's some background on Dirty, highly respected, as obviously as three teams now want to talk to him. Yeah, and he was a guy that uh, um, That's not bad. Quinn wanted to bring along uh, with him. Well, the thing that, that I see about the, the different defenses this year that are successful, they're all successful with a lot of pressure up front from their first from their front four. Mm -hmm. And to me, I think that really, if we could have a system like that where it takes a lot of pressure off the guys in the back seven, you know, that's something that we've got to really take a look at because right now uh, our linebackers, I put them air quotes, uh, they need to be able to see better. 
And right, and when you see the Cowboys don't play well, it's because they are being attacked by these big offensive linemen downfield, and they're coming unabated. So, to me, you've got to put some linemen there that are going to hold these guys up. Starts up front. Up front. Yeah. It's got to be one in the trenches. I like our linebackers. I do. But you need to have a team that has that Demarcus Lawrence mentality to where you go, I'm going to make this play myself. And I don't mean coming out of the, going out of the, the, the scheme of the defense, but being able to just control your area mm -hmm. to where it doesn't spill off to the rest of the team. And we just didn't do that when well. When you're this not year. pinning your earbacks going after the yeah. quarterback. And, and this yeah. might be too obvious of a question, but how many Cowboy defensive linemen finished in their top ten of total tackles? Hmm. Got a guess? None. Are Long? you considering Parsons to be a defensive lineman? No. Or a <laughs> I don't consider him. Well, what is he? Is an edge rusher? A... He's an edge rusher. <laughs> so is that a defensive lineman? It's D Law, right? D Law. Yeah. And and now Just once him. again, Lawrence <clears throat> Lawrence finished with fifty seven tackles. Parsons finished ninth with fifty six. Okay. So what you were saying, they didn't get a lot of production. Now, Osa uh, was 11th with 53, which tied Jordan Lewis, but he only had 24 solo tackles. So you have to go down to number 13, Dorrance Armstrong, with 33, mm -hmm. and he finished second with seven and a half sacks mm. to Parsons, right? 14. He's an unrestricted free agent. Yeah, that, that, that's a, that kid there. That's pretty good numbers there. I and mean, he, considering he doesn't really get too much and his, time. And, his, yeah. and his, his percentage of plays went down. His snap count went way year. down. Who are you talking yeah. to? Doran Thompson. Thompson. Okay, yeah. From Why last year that? to this year. Why is that? Because they probably played Parsons more at defensive end. That, and that, that's another issue. When the, the new, well, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I fired the man already, but uh, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We're jumping way ahead. Yeah, we are. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> well, I think what we have to look at is what the hell are we going to do with Parsons? I mean, we need to define what he's doing. We're not doing ourselves any favor by. I guess trying to trick the, the opposition. We can't, We're tricking ourselves. We don't know we, where he's supposed where to he's be. Supposed yeah. to we be. can't answer that question <laughs> until next week here on Mix Shots. Okay. Because next Why week we will know who the de we will know whether or not the defensive coordinator is returning or not. Mm -hmm. Right. We'll know this week whether Dan Quinn is headed to Seattle or Washington should, or coming. We should back. know that. Right? And so it should be defined. I think going forward, so it, it may should be, be defined. A, what is his position? It may make a difference who the defensive coordinator is. Mm -hmm. If they, we'll start there. <laughs> I, I could, we, we could, you know, if he's a linebacker, then that means that we just need one more linebacker, right? I mean, as far as starting, you know, you, and, but then now you have to have another edge rusher. So, you know, we have to figure this out. Uh, who and it, it, it goes to who we uh, want to draft or who we want to sign. And if you think about it, <clears throat> when you stock your linebacker position, you usually have. <laughs> yeah, we can see it. <laughs> Five or six linebackers, right? Because you need linebackers to play special teams, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, they had one. After Van Der Esch got hurt, mm -hmm. it was Clark. They used the um, the elevations on Jefferson up. What do you got? <laughs> 50 years ago today, the Cowboys drafted... Out of Tennessee State, one Ed Tuton Jones, and this is the picture on draft day, him getting the phone call. Look at that shirt. <laughs> Look at yeah, the hair. That? <laughs> Look at the hair. Uh, well, 50 years nice ago today, the Cowboys, this was tweeted out by the Pro Football <laughs> Hall of Fame. 50 years ago today, the Cowboys made history by selecting Ed Tuton Jones first overall in the NFL draft. It marked the first and still only time a player from an HBCU was taken with the number one pick. Number Congratulations, one pick. Ed Tutal Jones. You know how the Cowboys got that draft pick? Oh, go ahead. I knew. Oh, you, you got, you're got you so smart. Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> they, had, they had some uh, 
inside intel that he was eligible for the draft. Mm -hmm. Everybody else thought that he wasn't eligible. He had to play one more year. How did they acquire the pick? Oh, how did they acquire the pick? They made a that trade with the, the trade. Houston Oilers, and they traded a wide receiver named Billy Parks yeah. and a defensive end named Toady Smith to the Houston Oilers, and they acquired the number one overall pick from the Oilers. They Billy took Parks Ed Tuttle Jones. Billy Parks That's right, bad. and I have a great fondness for Billy Parks. Mm -hmm. because you know why I have a great fondness for Billy Parks? Because over the weekend, my daughter gave birth to my fifth grandson. Dang, dude. And the name, Congratulations. The name William Parks Griffith. <laughs> Why? Which I'm going to call him Billy, Billy Parks. Parks. Billy Parks. And of course, so me, he's not named after Billy Parks. No, not okay, at all. Okay. No, my name is William. My dad's <laughs> name is William. My father-in-law's name is William. My brother-in-law's name is William. And so there's, and then on my uh, son-in-law's side of the family, Parks is a family yes. name. Oh, nice. Too. He's going to be called Parks. Nice. But he's, I'm going to call him Billy Parks Aww, <laughs> in honor of the Cowboys Bill. wide receiver, Billy Parks. That's I've got right. a basketball team now. Five <laughs> grandsons. Yep. Billy. So, so when somebody yells, hey, Billy. Come here, four people. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's right. So That's all right. Yep. So hopefully Billy Parks Griffith comes home from the hospital today. That's good. See, it's oh, a it's stuff. a good it's stuff. a deep story nice. on how the Cowboys That's right. got to Tall so, Jones. Yep. So you know, I always got something up my. So sleeve. the draft was this <laughs> this was this early? Yeah, they used to have it. They used to have it like in December. Mm -hmm. It was like at the end of the regular season. No, it used season. to be in November. Okay, before, November before it, the before. season ended. That's why the Cowboys uh, didn't have a draft their first year, because the the draft for 1960 60. was already done in November of '59, during the season. No, yep. so and now wow. you know the rest, mm. and you only story. get that here on mix shots, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> All right, that does it uh, for this edition of Mix Shots. And who knows who the Cowboys defensive coordinator will be when we reconvene next Monday <laughs> at Wilds. 11 a.m. <laughs> Go Cowboys. <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!